Nick Jacomis, and today my guest is Dr. Dirk Hoffmeister. Professor Hoffmeister is a pharmaceutical microbiologist at the Hans Knoll Institute in Germany. His background is in both botany and mycology, the study of fungi, and his lab studies various aspects of fungal biochemistry and molecular biology, including the biochemistry and molecular genetics of psilocybin production in magic mushrooms. We spoke about various topics in mycology, mostly related to psilocybe mushrooms. This included how psilocybin is synthesized from the amino acid tryptophan, the ecological reasons for why some mushrooms produce psilocybin, why magic mushrooms turn a vibrant blue color when they they are physically damaged, the production of monoamine oxidase inhibitors, or MAOIs, by certain species of magic mushrooms, and the ecology of psilocybin mushrooms. We also touched on some of the other areas of mycology that his lab studies, so if you're interested in mushrooms in general, and magic mushrooms in particular, and psilocybin, and how it's produced, and sort of, sort of all of the inner molecular workings surrounding how that happens, this will be a great episode for you. Dr. Hoffmeister is one of the world's experts on the biochemistry of this stuff, so I learned a lot of really cool things from him. As always, if you enjoy the content I'm producing on the Mind and Matter podcast, please like, share, and subscribe. You can sign up for my free weekly newsletter at mindandmatter.substack.com. On that newsletter, I'll send out every week. You will see who the upcoming guests and topics of discussion will be. You'll see some of the research that I'm reading related to the topics I cover on the show and what I think about that. And I also post interesting links to other things that I'm reading or other content I'm producing elsewhere on other channels. You can also support the podcast by looking Looking at the links in the episode description or in that newsletter, you'll find some links with discount codes to some products that I like and that I use. And by using those products through that link, you'll directly support the podcast to help me keep it going and keep it growing. This episode is supported in part by The Amino Company. They specialize in making science-backed amino acid products that you can mix into any drink. Their products contain a mixture of essential amino acids, the building blocks of proteins in the body, as well as other nutrients including minerals like iron and electrolytes like potassium. Your body is constantly repairing damage and your muscles and tissues need the right mix of amino acids and nutrients to do this effectively. One thing I like about AminoCo is they actually conduct clinical trials to determine what their products really do. They have a variety of formulations and engineered for different purposes, and my personal favorite is one called Heal, which has been shown to be three times more efficient at triggering muscle growth and repair than other protein sources. It helps maintain healthy inflammation levels and preserve muscle mass during periods of inactivity. I mix this product into the water bottle I bring to the gym and consume it before, during, and after my workouts, and I have felt a noticeable difference in my performance during those workouts and my recovery times from soreness and fatigue afterwards. Their products are keto-friendly, soy-free, vegetarian or vegan, gluten-free, and non-GMO, so they are completely compatible with almost any diet or lifestyle. You can support the podcast and try Heal or any of their other products by using the discount code MIND when you visit aminoco.com slash mind. You will get 30% off your purchase. If you work out regularly or do intensive exercise, I recommend trying AminoCo's products. I get a lot of companies reaching out to me about advertising and I only end up using and liking a small percentage of the products that I see. So check out aminoco.com slash mind and use the code MIND to try these products today for 30% off. Today's show is brought to you in part by Dosist, an all-natural cannabis company specializing in dose-controlled cannabis products made with plant-based ingredients. To learn more about Dosist, their products, and where they are available, please visit their website through the link in the episode description. And with that, here's my conversation with Dr. Dirk Hoffmeister. Jena, which is um, pretty much in, in the center of Germany, um, not that um, it's not, not that much of a um, you know it, it's too small for a, for a big city and it's too big for a small town. Uh, One hundred thousand inhabitants, college town, a uh, quarter of them uh, being students, and uh, f f fun fun city. Yeah, and uh, you're from Germany originally. Yes, I, I am. Excellent. Um, and can you just kind of give everyone a little bit of a background in terms of what your scientific training is and what you study very, very generally? Oh, absolutely. Sure. Um, so I'm um, currently I'm a, a professor of um, pharmaceutical microbiology. Um, and by training, I'm botanist and mycologist. This, these were my, my majors. And um so basically, I back then, so 
25 years ago or a lot longer, even 30 years ago. Um, I, I didn't really, um, you know, think about the things and the subjects I'm think, thinking about today. Uh, so botany and mycology, this was my, my training. And I then went on for a PhD degree in, um, in um, basically in, in bacteriology on an antibiotics related topic, which took me a little bit away from, you know, from, from, my, from my fungi and from my mushrooms, um, which I was interested in before. And then later on, I, after I finished my PhD degree, um, but I, I should say um, all, the, all, all the time now from, you know, from being an undergrad throughout my, my PhD time as a PhD student, I was interested in, um, in small molecules, in, in all these, these wonderful molecules that, that nature came up with as antibiotics, as um, something that tastes spicy or, or hot or sweet or uh, all, the, all the, the various herbs. I mean, just, just look around in, in, in your kitchen. Um, you know, just, just think about your kitchen. What, what's, what, what's there? What's, what's, what's tasteful? Um, and, and, and so nature basically has, has evolved so many and so wonderful molecules. And, and this, this interest was kind of, you know, um, uh, has been constant all over the years. And so when, when I was done with my PhD degree, I went to the United States for, um, for my postdoc training in, uh, to, to the Midwest, Madison, Wisconsin. And there I kind of got reintroduced to fungi. So it's basically, it was kind of a, of a, of, of a circle I, I, I made. And uh, which then, you know, took me back to the, to the, fungi and their small molecules, their natural products. Um, and so th this was about the time when I um, had to think about my own independent research program. Mm -hmm. I had to, but basically I, I was kind of decided to, to, to follow an academic career. And, um, and, and so I had to, to, to think about what, um, what kind of niche, what kind of research I, I would like to do um, as, as my own independent program. And notice that mushrooms are little understood in terms of how they make um, these natural products. This is the, the correct term, the, the, the technical term, natural products, small molecules, often bioactive. And when you think about mushrooms and what, what what are the you know most prominent and most well-known molecules, you think about toxins. Mm. And so the, I, I thought about oh, um, I should I should do research on the on, on on the death cap. You know this 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 incredibly toxic mushroom that that appears in in the fall. Uh, and um, that 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 could even kill you, and so th th this was one one thought I had. The other thought this was back in, in two thousand and three four ish, and this was one choice. And and the other obvious thing, and I I believe this was the reason why why you introduced me to to uh, to your episode today. Uh, the, the other, um, the other obvious choice was the were the magic mushrooms, and from today's perspective, I I, I was fortunate to you know to, to choose neither one nor the other because the, the 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 techniques and the methods were not as advanced as they are today, and I would have miserably failed. But anyway, the the, the idea was was you know, in, in my mind. And so I went on with, with, with other molecules, um, went, went back to Germany, uh, accepted the junior group leader position, then moved back to the United States, again, to the Midwest, uh, even further north to, to Minnesota, hmm. um, uh, and uh, accepted a faculty position there, a, a tenure track position there, and then relocated as well to my uh, current place um, to, you know, to expand on, on, on that topic and, and say with, with more 
resources available and with the with the methods um, um, being more advanced than they they used to be 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. So um, what what, a, what initially drew you to mycology? Um, mycology's it's not. Uh, I mean, it's become sort of famous uh, recently with the whole psilocybin mushroom thing. Mm -hmm. But it's never. Uh, you don't typically. It's it's not considered a, a big or sexy field. So how did you get into mushrooms and mycology to begin with? Was this a lifelong interest? Um, well, well, I mean, I mean, this, this is kind of an individual perspective. Whether it's a, it's a sexy um, <laughs> topic, topic or not, <laughs> I guess. Um, yes, yes, definitely. It. Um, it, it Ooh, this is a tough one. Um, what drew me to my ecology? Um, they, um, this, this, this is a, I, I, I think this is a combination of two um, of two aspects. First of this, it has to do with with a lifelong interest. So, I, as as a kid, I, I grew up in a in a rural area, a rural place in the in the far southwest of Germany. And, and nature was readily available. You know, I, I just left my, my parents' home and I was in the, in the forest. Mm. Um, hit the forest and, and, you know, found the mushroom as a, as, a, as a kid. And I knew the most important ones as a, as a kid. And the, the, the chanterelles and the bolides and so. Uh, so th th this, this was, um, I think this, this was one aspect that caught my interest very Early on, and the second, um, the, the second thing was um, one of my academic teachers, of the most influential one, probably of, of my academic teacher who now passed away a few years ago. Um, who was such a brilliant, such a talented teacher and researcher, and this ki kind of you know, um, so I, I just got hooked again after you know 15 years as an undergrad and so I, I i took all the classes all the all the courses and this is kind of you know laid the foundation of of um of my interest although his his research back then was was completely differently oriented it was was more about evolution and systematics and and taxonomy and whereas my research is more into into you know molecular biology chemistry biochemistry um so so the the, the direction is a different one but the, the basis is the same it's, it's about mushrooms mm -hmm. yeah and from from a taxonomic perspective so you said mm -hmm. you start you, you majored and you studied early on botany and mycology mm -hmm. um where do fungi sit relative to plants and animals in the in the tree of life much closer to animals mm. much much i mean tra traditionally the 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 um Animal biologists had more, uh, you know, th had to, to think about more animals than the botanists about plants. So the kind of the, they, they they kind of you know um, you know took took mycology to to plants. It uh, so the, the 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 tree of life. So if if you have so so the, the, the plants are branching here. So, so all all evolutionary biologists who who are listening now, uh, please forgive me if, if I you know simplify the tree of life with just my my ten fingers. Um, so plants are here basically, and and that branch that direction, um, then later off branches off here in, into very simple in, in very simple terms now in, into fungi and 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 um, and animals. I see. Yeah. So superficially, a lot of people think a fungi is closer to plants because you know they kind of grow out of the dirt like plants and they like mm -hmm. vaguely look like plants but they're actually more closely related to us they, 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 they cannot cannot walk away um, but, uh, like like animals or most most of them um uh, but, but there's uh, but we should keep in mind that that the the relationship between plants and fungi is a very very close one it's it's mm. a co-evolution um or has has been a co-evolution um over 500 plus millions of years probably uh, even even before before the the uh, basically the plants you know um went uh, basically went out of the sea and 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 conquered the the, the land um and so what, what, what we see today is 
or what 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 it resulted in is that 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 plants and 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 fungi have very close relationships be uh, be it a, a, a symbiotic one so that that each partner or multiple partners benefit from each other or um uh, or, or fungi use plants as a um, as a host for uh, parasitic fungi use plants as, as as their host and which is kind of a you know a, a one way street now the, the, the benefit and so um, the, the the notion of plants and fungi being very close to each other is is um, kind of kind of justified. Not from an evolutionary perspective, but from from you know just going outside and, and yeah. what's, what's going I on. Yes, yeah, so when you look at the genetics and and the literal familial relationship, fungi are closer to animals and plants. Nonetheless, they are closely intermingled with plants in terms of their actual like ecological interactions. Absolutely, Abs absolutely, and and they they, they couldn't survive um, without the other one. I mean, we were talking about fungi now or mushrooms. Um, and many, many mushrooms are, you know, uh, live in, in a close symbiosis with, with look, look at all the, you know, the, the, on, on a global scale that the Northern hemisphere is dominated by forests. I mean, so, so don't, don't think about deforestation. Don't think about, you know, humans that, that destroy habitats, but just leave the, the planet um, as, as it would have developed. Mm -hmm without without human influence without human impact and then that the northern hemisphere um in 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 temperate areas in let's say that that's that's north america united states also in boreal um forests canada and you know further north or scandinavia further north in in, in europe uh, these are dominated by trees that depend on mushrooms as a partner in the in the soil in the ground, they have a very close um, you know interaction, physical interaction between plant roots and the, the fungal hyphae that the filamentous you know cells and and um, of of of, um, of, of, of of the mushrooms uh, for for exchange of nutrition, and um, and and so the, the one couldn't live out um, without the other one without the other partner, and this is why why we. And, and so, so, uh, so as we walk through a, a, a forest in, in in fall, you know, and, and see all the, the the various mushrooms that that that, that, that uh, you know um, pop up and, and and grow out of the of the soil, uh, we, we obviously think about this is this they they must have have something to do with each other. I mean, not from a from an ecological stand, but from from an evolutionary standpoint, mm -hmm. as we know now, or or many years ago now. Yeah, and um, like. I think when people think about mushrooms, they're thinking of the fruiting body, the thing that actually comes out of the ground from time mm -hmm. to time. Yes. But what you're alluding to is there's this vast network underneath the ground. In, in the in the ground, ex exactly. Yeah. Can you talk that, a little bit about like what that is? What what is the life cycle of a mushroom? And and you know when it's underground, what is that called? And and what is that sort of form of the mushroom? And then why does why do these things periodically make these very very big fruiting bodies that pop up from time to time. So the the, the fruiting bodies like like this one here, um, this is just for for reproduction. So the um, this, this is what what we see that that, that that's right, Nick. So this, this is what what we see as a as a you know how we how we perceive um, mushrooms. But this this is just a, a temporary thing, an ephemeral thing. These are um, formed for for reproduction, for sexual reproduction. So the 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 the, the, the spores, the you know that 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 are ready to grow out and and you know make the next generation, uh, they, they they would be formed here, here at at, at the cap, and the the. the, the so that this happens once in in you know in fall. So that there are the the, the fruiting bodies. They they appear quick and out there for a couple days and you know in the soil in the ground there's kind of a web-like structure of of long filamentous uh, hyphae um really like 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 filaments very long and and they are very thin so much thinner than um, a, 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 a tree root mm. 
So in other words, they can they can access little you know, niches and pores in the soil um, that a, 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 a plant couldn't grow into. And so they, they, they can um, they, they can take up nutrients and supply the tree with nutrients. And, and th th this kind of, of relation uh, and this 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 um, these these high fee and the the, the, the entirety of, of, of high fee would be called mycelium from from my mucus pill, um, uh, mushroom or fungus. And so th this mycelium stays there um, you know year round and, and supplies the tree with, um, with 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 elements with nutrients, phosphorus, nitrogen, Protects the so basically it really if, if this is a plant root here and then the 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 the, the, the mushroom hyphae these these underground cells they, they they would you know wrap around wrap themselves around the, the root and also offer some some protection and drought resistance so this is this is the benefit that the that the the tree has the tree in return can make um, sugars nutrients mm. but by just taking in co2 fixate the co2 and 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 reduce it in, into into sugar this is what what we live from you know um so i will i will have dinner soon you maybe you, you will have breakfast maybe <laughs> uh, soon you you will eat you know cornflakes or or yeah. um, well, my, mushroom, or my mushroom coffee is all i've had so far oh, oh okay <laughs> <laughs> and um and and so the, the the benefit the mushroom has is that it, it can it, it has access to 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 nutrients to to to, to sugars to carbon to, to car, car, so, carbon source. Is it is so is it fair to say that basically so these mycelial networks are providing the plants with micronutrients like certain elements, mm -hmm. also physical protection and and mm -hmm. I, I think we'll, maybe we'll talk about antibiotics and things like this. And yeah. the plant is giving the fungus primarily macronutrients like sugars. Yes, yeah, that, that's that's correct. Okay, so and this, 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 and this is the case for for a symbiotic relationship. So 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 both partners, in some cases that there, there are multiple partners involved, but keep it simple. Um, both partners are um, they, they they benefit from each other. And in case of of a, of a parasitic um, of a parasitic mushroom, there are many out there. Uh, they attack um, a, a tree. Maybe it, um, you know a, a limb broke off, or um, a, a, a thunderstorm hit hit the hit, hit, hit the tree, and so there, there there's kind of an injury. And then that the the the, the, the mushroom can enter the the the, the, the tissue the, the the tree tissue and can now degrade um living matter living tissue in in the in the tree and th this this is a, a process you know wh whoever is, is is stronger and um that, that that can go on over over decades um and eventually the the the, the mushroom will win i, I would say um and the, the 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 tree will die, and um, w w and and then serve at the, and this 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 dead wood will then serve as substrate also as a macronutrient for new life. Think mm. think about think think about um, how. Um, Think about a, a forest, maybe somewhere in in you know East Coast or or Canada or 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 Minnesota, a, a forest without any um, human influence. It just develops over centuries, over millennia, and during that time, many 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 generations of trees. Um, will will die. They will fall off, or maybe a, a, a storm hits hits a forest, and then the, 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 they they just tip over. But still, after after decades and centuries and millennia, um, the, the 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 dead wood, the dead trees, they, they will not you know um, reach the sky, but they they will have been degraded in the meantime. Why? Because degrading fungi, not the symbiotic ones, but the de degrading ones, um, did their job, 
and it, it takes about maybe 100 years for for um, you know a whole set of of, of mushrooms to degrade uh, a tree a, a big you know substantial maybe oak tree that that fell off or fell fell over uh, to degrade it into powder mm -hmm. so there's there's a couple different broad types of mushrooms. There's the ones that want the plants to stay alive to engage in the symbiotic exchange and the, the ones that want to degrade them. And they're, yeah. they're always in some kind of, you know, cyclical balance in, in mm -hmm. the whole ecosystem. Mm -hmm. It's ki kind of uh, what, what, what the scientists um, ca um, call carbon cycling. So we have CO2 in the air as a, as a, as a substrate or something beneficial for plants because they, they live from, from, from CO2 carbon dioxide um, and so this is what um, basically trees fixate car uh, the CO2 make biomass they grow at, at the best example at, at the west coast this these wonderful sequoia trees I mean they they, they, they you know they, they just hit the sky and um, and um, and then degraders need to come in to basically to, to disintegrate this biomass, this wonderful biomass that we call trees, to disintegrate it again and make it available to new life and then, you know, close the cycle. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, they're, they're literally disintegrating structures that have been, uh, that have been grown that are sort of bound up all of this energy and all of this carbon and they make them mm -hmm. they make them useful again through this physical mm -hmm. disintegration process yeah. interesting so when we think about the fruiting bodies the reproductive organs mm -hmm. these things sprout up from time to time mm -hmm. part of the year and they release spores okay. and this is how the mushroom network is reproducing itself mm -hmm. and of course we've got uh, medicinal mushrooms that make things like antibiotics or other nutrients that have medicinal mm -hmm. properties. We've got gourmet mushrooms that people or other mm -hmm. animals eat as nutrients. And then mm -hmm. of course we have toxic mushrooms. Yep. So we sort of have this panoply of different uh, options that sprout up on the forest floor. Some of them can kill you. Some of them can nourish can you. you. No, nourish you, yeah. Um, why, why do we see that kind of diversity? And from the mushrooms perspective, why is it making, why do different mushrooms make these types of things that can affect animals when they eat the fruiting body? So this, this questions, why, why do mushrooms or in more general sense, why do fungi or plants make all these wonderful compounds be toxic compounds or, or, you know, uh, whatever. This is kind of the the the, the, the holy grail, the, the most most important question of of my research area, natural product research area, um, and only in a in very few cases we know why. In and in in I mean to to, to be honest, in, in in most in most cases we simply don't know why an organism invests all the energy all the the, the, the metabolic power and multi-step reactions to come up with a with a particular compound that that we think of as a as a toxin or as as an antibiotic i mean that does is that the, the purpose for which this compound a particular compound uh, was, was evolved for is it was it really to make an antibiotic or maybe something else we use it as an antibiotic because we, 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 you know, isolate, we extract, we test and see bioactivity against whatever. But was this really the, the purpose of, of having been evolved? And, and now coming back to the, to the toxic, um, in quotes, toxic um, mushrooms that, um, I mean, in, in, in textbooks, you, you would, are, are, yeah, you would consider um, the magic mushrooms also to be toxic because they they you know interfere with your neuro neurotransmission and and cause uh, hallucinations and stuff. So on, on on first glance, you would consider them toxic. Um, and and this is actually what, uh, uh, um, also a, a question that I 
I'm, I'm, I'm trying to answer, have been trying to answer, still am trying to answer, is what, why, why was, was psilocybin evolved? Mm. I mean, from, from part, part of it, um, may, I mean, one, one theory would be um, you, you interfere with, with, with the neurotransmission of, of, a, of, 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 of a predator, of, of, of kind of a you know, small animal that, that, that nibbles on you and, and, and tries to feed on you. So th this would be a, a more general concept. This is protection. Like um, like other maybe other um, other toxins or what what we consider toxins simply as a, as a protection. And this this may be, may be true in, in in you know many cases some cases uh, that that they are simply made for for protection. So so you don't get the the, the producer uh, does not get you know eaten up chewed up by a by by, by an animal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one thing that jumps to mind there is. Um... I mean, when you think about something like psilocybin in the psilocybe mushrooms, mm -hmm. one pattern that seems to be true to me is when you look at psychoactive drugs that come from plants, they typically seem to be made for defensive purposes to protect the reproductive organ. And mm -hmm. I, I wonder if, I mean, do you think, is that a general trend in botany that a lot of these things that happen to be psychoactive when an animal like a human eats them are actually mm -hmm. being used by the plant uh, for defense to kill insects or to interfere with an animal that might want to eat it? Tough question. I, I, I can't, can't, can't really um, answer your question, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid. If this is a, um, a a general principle, I I rather think. I mean, so so what? Let, let's talk about plants. Um, in in case of of um, opium opium poppy, I would say yes. This is this is protection. Mm -hmm. This is my, my 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 personal guess. So um, please, all all pharmacologists now in in, in the audience, <laughs> they 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 may. Um, they may look at that um, differently. So I, I would I would say yes. In the case of um, of cannabis, not not sure, not sure. I mean, it, it's the the, the female flowers, um, obviously that 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 are you know rich in in in, in THC, which is actually not 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 the only compound. Which is an, an, another question related to to yours. Um, why not one particular, or why in one in some cases one particular compound? Why in other cases uh, this this uh, entire set of of, of um, many many compounds? For, uh, how how many how many THC um, related or, or congeners have, have been isolated from hemp? I believe fifty or sixty or even um, or even even more. Um, and so it's probably it's not not about one particular compound, but more, more a, a mixture of, mm -hmm. of 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 them all. So the, the the true ecological reason why why they have been evolved is is maybe the mixture, not not the isolate. I mean, we we think about as uh, so as as um, you know from a from a pharma pharmaceutical perspective or a pharmacological perspective, we think in individual pure compounds with defined properties with defined interactions with a with a with a receptor in our brain, but but nature maybe thought differently. And you know, com coming back to um, to to psilocybin, um, what I think is the case, and what what our research um, you know points to. Well, this this is this is. Um, it, 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 it's, it's hypothetical, but but at, at least an idea to keep in mind is that that um, that um, psilocybin um, it, or the the, the 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 capacity to make psilocybin has in fact to do with protection, but not by interfering with with the, with the, the uh, predator's neurotransmission, but much much simpler, um, but by just making a, a protective agent on demand mm. um, think about you're you familiar with that of, of course and and many in the audience as, as well i believe 
uh, with the bluing reaction of of the magic mushrooms. Yeah, when you touch them or you you physically bru- 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 them. injure them or c- cut them, they, they they turn immediately. They they turn blue, you know, instantly. It's beautiful, yeah, like almost iridescent color. Mm-hmm. And um, and what what I think is the case that the, the that the magic mushrooms. Do not make. I mean, from 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 our anthropocentric perspective, and with with this, you know, powerful and 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 and, and wonderful pharmacology that has accompanied, you know, humankind for for centuries and millennia. In uh, we, we think about this such such something such such a such a wonderful phenomenon. This must have something to do. Nature must have evolved this for for you know whatever purpose to to interfere with 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 um, neurotransmission or with with our brains and our our thinking and behavior our animals' behavior predators' behavior. But I think that the 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 the, 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 the answer is much much simpler. That the mushrooms are not interested in psilocybin itself. It's just a, a storage form. It's, it's about chemical defense, but it's not that not to to interfere with with um, with our brains and our behavior, but to to have a, a compound, an an inert compound that can um, reactivate it quick upon attack, upon demand or, or on demand, and then turn into that that blue pigment. That is um, that 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 binds to to protein that that can precipitate proteins. That is that is um, that, that that kind of um, can 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 react with proteins and keep um, predators from feeding on 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 the mushroom. So it's a, a defense on demand. This is my my hypothesis. A defense on demand, kind of a, a melanin, a, a, mm. a, a, a protect a protective polymer, and psilocybin is just the monomer that's stable and safe to store. Um, I see. Think, so think, so so the bluing when the bluing happens, it's mm-hmm. a bunch of psilocybin individual molecules that have physically started to stick together. Uh, it, yes, in, indirectly. So so what happens? So psilocybin is is a stable molecule. That you can actually store here in, in in the lab, that can can be stored, and um, and it, it has very has one very unusual feature. Now now, I'm, now a few technical terms will will you know come in. Mm-hmm. It has a, a very from from a structural perspective a very unusual feature, and that's a, a phosphate ester. So a, a phosphate group is basically sticking on an on a, on, on an alcohol group of the molecule. With the phosphate, we call it psilocybin. Without the phosphate, we call it psilocin, the molecule, which is the actual bioactive or n- neuroactive compound. Psilocybin itself is, is inactive or little active. But as soon as we you know, um, ingest the mushrooms, the, the, the molecules will, the, the, the psilocybin will be cleaved into psilocin. And that is what causes the, the, the pharmacological effects and the psychedelic effects. And psilocin is highly reactive, and it will um, it will connect to other psilocin molecules. It will poly- oligomerize or polymerize into that wonderful blue color. And th- this is kind of the same, and it ful- fulfills the, the same role. This is my hypothesis. It fulfills the same role than um, melanin in. In, in other you know other organisms i see so so the psilocybin is made in the fruiting body the psilocybin mm-hmm. can turn into psilocin which happens to be the psychedelic compound that mm-hmm. most people are familiar with yeah. with magic mushrooms but the psilocin start to oligomerize and polymerize meaning they start to physically attach to each other mm-hmm. and that's where that bluing comes from so is this is this providing like a physical barrier is it almost like a, a physical protection like a wound healing or something like that or is there some kind of chemical deterrent to an insect or something like this it, it's a it's a chemical it, it, it acts on a, on a chemical basis because the the this this blue oligomer this this psilocin oligomers Multiple, mole- multiple individual molecules now being linked to each other. Um, they bind to, to, to other proteins 
say in the in the um, um, in, in intestinal tract of of a of a animal that that feeds on the on the mushroom, oh. and so so it's kind of a of a it, it, it precipitates proteins, it, it binds to proteins, attaches to proteins, and then harms um, a potential predator. I see. So maybe like the insects literally just get physically sick or something. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. They, they, they won't continue feeding on it. That's it. This is this is my my theory. Yeah. I see. Okay, so the I mean, idea. Think, 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 think about think, think about a, a, a hand grenade. <laughs> uh, kind of a strange strange comparison, I know. Um, it, it has a um, it has a, a, a pin that a security pin um, that that keeps the, the the grenade from you know going off. It's called psilocybin, with with the phosphate group still attached. So once you cleave off the phosphate, you pull out the pin, and now it you know it, it goes off and boom. I see. Interesting. Yeah. So the psilocybin, the psilocybin has this sort of like little safety mechanism on it. Mm -hmm. When you take that off and you get the psilocin, now you can have this oligomerization reaction where all of these compounds connect to mm -hmm. each other, and then you get this bluing reaction that we see, which is a just a physical manifestation of mm -hmm. what might be this kind of protection mechanism. Mechanism, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Is it primarily so so from the mushroom's perspective, mm -hmm. the fruiting body of a salaspi mushroom, mm -hmm. is the primary predator for this insects or is it animals as well uh, I, I would say it's, it's it's insects or maybe some um, helmets some some um, helmets some some worms living in the, in the ground um, maybe some some slugs or like I that. see yeah slugs um, but, uh, but not, not, not necessarily um, not necessarily um, I, I don't. Be, I mean, that, again, that this is hard for 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 humans uh, to believe, but I don't don't think that that um, that that these these little magic mushrooms um, have evolved the, the psilocybin for you know for us. Yeah, yeah. One thing that that makes that um, a little tricky, in my opinion, the idea that the mushroom evolved it with uh, animals in mind is you have to eat enough of the mushrooms to get a psychoactive effect, and of course, there's a delay, so it mm -hmm. would make it quite difficult for an animal to learn by association that, you know, if, if you're a small animal on the forest floor, nibbling on mushrooms and other things, mm -hmm. it would be very difficult to learn that it was those particular mushrooms that caused some psychoactive effect yeah. two hours later. Yeah. <laughs> but in, in, in case of, of the brewing, brewing reaction as a, as an immediate, you know, protection mechanism or, or uh, to, 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 to thwart off a, a, a predator. I mean, this, this happens within seconds. That this yeah, is yeah. an immediate re re reaction. Interesting. Yeah, and, and I know th this is basically re related to what what chemists call uh, protection um, uh, pr protection groups or protection chemistry. So this, this is a strategy in when when, when you do um, a, a, a synthesis, a, a chemical synthesis has nothing to do with nature now, um, and you want to do a particular reaction at a particular position, but you've got multiple um, reactive positions in the molecule, then you need to protect the others that you don't want to see mm. react and um, to, to just work on, on, on one position. And then when, once you are done with your, with your synthesis, you then need to deprotect, take off the, 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 the protecting groups again from the molecule. And th this is kind of a, a similar strategy, I believe, this this uh, relationship between psilocin and psilocybin that it, it really is, it's it's natural protection ke group chemistry because this is something uh, now it's, it's getting a bit more, more technical um because I, I was i was intrigued by this by this phosphate as to why nature doesn't do that very often this is very rare and there, there would have been other options and less less um, energy intensive and less cost intensive uh, options to stabilize a molecule Hmm. Why? Why do I? Why did did did, did the fungi um, phosphorylate? And and the, the answer, I mean, in in, in the light of, of this of 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 that, that theory, um, it, it's clear because you cannot just stick something on. You need to make sure that it it it, it comes off again when it, when it needs to get off. Needs to come off.
So it's it's protective chemically, but it can yeah. easily be removed. Re re when, reversible, yeah. It's it's, yeah. it's 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 protective chemistry, but it's reversible chemistry, and 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 this is, um, you know, more makes makes more sense to me. Yeah, and that would be, I guess, that would be the perfect kind of protection. That reversible protective chemistry is why that blueing reaction can happen so quickly. You can very mm -hmm. quickly change the molecule and and like let it that. do what it needs to. Yeah, absolutely. Interesting. And, and, I, and, and the, the, the second thing is, as we as we um, basically um, worked on the on the biosynthesis, so that the metabolic steps, how the the the, the mushrooms actually make psilocybin. Is that that there, there's been um, um, uh, um, kind of a, a proposed biosynthetic route that was uh, devised in the in the late sixties by, by brilliant chemists that they did brilliant work and they were really you know they were ahead of their their time back then um, and w which which kind of proposed that that psilocin is an intermediate a, a precursor to psilocybin. And when we so when we did our research uh, into the biosynthesis, we we it, it slowly dawned on us that the, the 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 mushrooms do not make psilocybin, but they they have evolved the entire pathway in a way to avoid by all means that psilocybin ever occurs. That's uh, psilocin. Sorry, psilocin ever occurs. So the com complete opposite, and and even. Um, they, they they even so this 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 biosynthetic you know mechanism step by step by step even has a built in mech a built in repair mechanism so it should ever psilocin occur in the cell you know in in the intact cell not not when when it you know gets bruised or something but in mm -hmm. the intact cell so if if ever psilocin should occur in the cell there's a protection mechanism a, a safety switch that protects psilocin again and makes it uh, become psilocybin again. Mm. So the, 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 the fungal cell tries to avoid, by, by all means, by all means, it tries to avoid um, that, 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 that psilocin uh, occurs because it's, it's, it's too reactive. Because yeah. otherwise the, it, it would, you know, exert the toxic effect on, on the on protein itself. itself. On itself. Yeah. This, this kind, yeah. kind of, if, you, if you pull the pin out of your hand yeah. grenade and store it in, in, your, in your garage. Yeah. I mean, there is kind of an analogy with cannabis here because, you know, the cannabis essential oil, which contains THC acid, mm -hmm. um, it's always put in the trichomes at the external surface of the plant. The plant mm -hmm. kind of doesn't want it on the inside. And um, it actually, at least there's some evidence to suggest that that is also offering a kind of, in this case, physical protection because apparently the THC acid um, the acidic group can absorb photons apparently. Um, mm -hmm. and so it might be, you know, some people think that it might be acting as a kind of sunscreen for the plant, basically, uh, <laughs> uh, to help, uh, absorb, uh, some of the UV radiation that the plant is mm -hmm. going to be exposed to. Mm -hmm. Um, so anyways, so the plant is making psilocybin, it, or excuse me, the fungus is making uh, psilocybin. Fungus. Um, so these psilocybin mushrooms make this compound, which is very interesting. It's got this, protective phosphate group over one part of the molecule mm -hmm. and as soon as you pull that off that was your hand grade anal hand grade analogy mm -hmm. grenade yeah. analogy um, kind of brutal analogy but uh, yeah but but it's conveys, interesting conveys the message yeah. as soon as you pull that off you've got psilocin which is now very reactive and it can oligomerize it can mm -hmm. come together with other psilocin molecules and that offers potentially some kind of protection but in any case that's mm -hmm. where the bluing the very fast bluing reaction comes from yes yes so if we back up into the biochemistry here mm -hmm. can you unpack um where the psilocybin is coming from so what yes. are the starting materials for the psilocybin and how do you get to that? Mm -hmm. Pretty, pretty simple. Um, so the, the, the starting point is an amino acid that, that we all have in our, in, in, in our proteins that all organisms have in their proteins. Uh, that's called L-tryptophan. It's the, 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 yeah, um, heaviest amino acid and the and the and the the, the, the rarest amino acids um, among the 20 yeah 20 most cases um, amino acids that, that that we basically consist of and so it, it begins with with this 
you know, general building block that's available ev everywhere in in your in in your food and in, in in the the, the meat or steak or whatever you you eat or or plant you know uh, veg vegetarian food and um, and the, the 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 first step is that it gets that it it um, it loses CO two um, to make tryptamine out of tryptophan. So tryptophan is what's going in, and the, the, the first you know processing step is that the tryptophan loses CO two carbon dioxide, and and um, and produces or an, an enzyme does that um, produces tryptamine. Step number one. Step number two is is another you know, quite unique feature that that doesn't occur very often in in natural product chemistry, which is now it's getting very technical. Um, this is that you install an alcohol group OH and oxygen atom now comes in at a particular position of the of tryptamine, position four. Um, very good choice a uh, choice by by nature to to put the put the the, the oxygen there. I will get uh, come back to that later. And this occurs a very um, you know very infrequently, very rare. This is a very rare feature. And interestingly, it happens as well with um, kratom. Mm. So the the the, the uh, mitragynin, the, the the kratom molecule, um, features a four hydroxy four hydroxylated um, indole system as well. Anyways, so now now we've installed the alcohol group, um, and the the next step. Is the phosphorylation because because now that the, the molecule is, is kind of instable and and, and, and reactive, um, prone to oxidation, um, and now you, you, uh, the, the fungus immediately phosphorylates to, um, this alcohol group, this four four OH group, uh, to stabilize the molecule to, to basically to push in the the, the, the security pin, and the, the final um, the, the the final step is. Um, also technical term now to transfer methyl groups, one carbon unit um, to the molecule, which then completes um, psilocybin biosynthesis. And this is also uh, one of the, the, the questions um, we were asking ourselves, why this methylation? So it's, it's getting methylated twice. Um, it, it's not necessary because um, it, it would bind to, I mean, the, the, the psychedelic effect or the, 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 the polymerization effect, the bluing effect would happen with or without, um, without these methyl groups on. Um, and the reason is, again, what I think is the reason, so others may think differently, um, is that it is required to slow down To to, um, to 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 slow down um, basically, or to, to to make the to make this this um, this this protection mechanism possible from psilocin to back to psilocybin. This 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 protection mechanism mechanism um, that um, that that keeps the cell clear of of psilocin i see so and and, and it, it 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 kind of you know helps um um s s slow down s slow down reactivity to to make the, the protection mechanism faster i see fast so enough. so basically the fungus starts with tryptophan and mm -hmm. it gets it through food just like we do so it gets this yes. amino acid from its diet and then yes. turns this tryptophan amino acid into tryptamine Mm -hmm. which is presumably the the basic building block of all of the psychedelic tryptamines and other tryptamines. Exactly. And you, you go from tryptamine to psilocybin and the chemistry there is such that mm -hmm. you've got this phosphate group on one piece that um is a protection it's a protection thing to mm -hmm. stabilize the molecule but it's also easy to come off and mm -hmm. you've got these other modifications that make it really easy um for the fungus to do this bluing reaction through psilocin, but also mm -hmm. easily convert the psilocin back to psilocybin mm -hmm. inside of the cell if that needs to happen. Yes, I see. So exactly. I guess the name the name of the exactly. game here is 
the fungus, so psilocin, the thing that we, we is the psychedelic compound that's yeah. psychoactive in our brains. It's a very reactive molecule mm -hmm. and the fungus at the simultaneously takes advantage of that reactivity for the bluing reaction, potential protective mechanism to protect mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. But also because it's so reactive, it doesn't want too much psilocin inside of the cells. So there's yeah. some other chemistry there that's, that's protecting the fungus from that happening. It would be harmful to the, to the producer. Yes, uh, absolutely. Interesting. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, you sum summarized it brilliantly. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so that's really interesting. But also before you mentioned, you know, we talked about cannabis a little bit, it produces THDA, mm -hmm. but it also produces this sort of constellation of other things. And there's this mm -hmm. sort of, you know, branching pattern of biochemical pathways that get you this co cocktail of compounds mm -hmm. inside of that psilocybin synthesis pathway. Is it just sort of one single pathway that goes from tryptophan to psilocybin or are there other branches that the fungus can use to make other um, tryptamines as well? Um, so, so within the, the tryptophan to psilocybin pathway, there is almost no no branching, very very minor branching. Mm -hmm. we, we discovered one one branch, uh, which uh, with in, in very very minor quantities. Um, so that there's that this is a pretty pretty straightforward and, and linear um, thing. Um, but the the fungus, the the, the magic mushrooms other mushrooms as well, other organisms as well, other plants as well. Um, they can make other compounds out of L-tryptophan. Um, and, and interestingly, uh, the, the magic mushrooms can make um, compounds that are um, referred to as beta-carbolines. Mm. Um, like um, um, so the, the, the harmala um, alkaloids, and and they kind of they are these are also bioactive molecules. These beta carbolines, um, but in a in a completely different way, they they inhibit um, um, a, a human enzyme that helps degrade. For, for example, psilocin. Mm. Uh, so this is kind of a, a, a synergism. You know, the, the mushroom makes a compound that, 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 that um, exerts a certain effect in us or in other organisms. And at, at the same time, it produces a compound that inhibits the degradation of another mushroom compound. Yeah. So the, the mushroom at least certain species of psilocypes are making both psilocybin mm -hmm. and these beta carboline carbolines MAOIs. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and, monamine oxidase inhibitors. Yeah. And as many people will know, this is kind of interesting because this is, um, you know, in one organism, you have this cocktail coming together, which is very similar to what the shamans in the Amazon do by combining two different plants for and, the and, ayahuasca and brew. Ayahuasca, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That, that that's exactly the same same principle. You use a tryptamine and and use a, a MAOI a monoamine oxidase inhibitor in in a cocktail. But the 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 mushroom basically produces in it all all at once in, in one organism. Uh, but one one cautionary note: we, we published that work, um, and we we wrote it in in in, in this publication as well. But it was got kind of maybe a little bit you know in in the background. Um, that first off, the, the, the beta carboline contents in the mushrooms are very, very low. Mm. I would say too low for, for true pharmacological effect. That, that's the first thing. The other thing is the, um, the, the highest, if you want to call them high at all, um, the highest um, Better carbon contents were found in again in the in the hyphae in this fluffy mycelium in, in the, the the white thing not not in the fruiting bodies themselves. Hmm. So the the fruiting bodies they are full of psilocybin, one thing, and the the, the mycelium the, the 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 white, you know, cotton wool fluffy thing, um, is a little bit richer in in the in in, in the better carbolines. So they don't necessarily co-occur. At inside. the same time, at the same place. Yes. And this okay, so the, the beta carbons are more prominent in the mycelial network. In the mycelium, yes. 
in 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 the growing mycelium towards the the tip we also did some some work on my my students and collaborators did some some beautiful work to localize that um, to localize the, the the contents with with um you know um, imaging techniques uh, mass spectrometer imaging techniques and they, they seem to be localized towards the the, the ends towards the, the the tips of the of the growing hyphae hmm. um, but they, they don't really co-occur at, at the same pl uh, place and at, at the same time in the, we... in the fungal life cycle so um th this is what what you know went under a, a little bit in the um in, in when when people read the the, the publication because it, it 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 sounded too good you know yes um, yes i see <laughs> yeah, so people, the, yeah, the, people, the waska. yeah yeah people were immediately thinking oh okay this could be why certain mushroom species may be more potent because potent, the psilocin exactly, yeah. is potentiated mm -hmm. by the moi but basically what you're mm -hmm. saying is the fruiting body's got all the psilocybin very mm -hmm. little beta carboline content yes. the mycelial network is the opposite Yes, and it's got higher MAOIs. Any mm -hmm. is there any hint at what the function of the beta carbolines are in the mycelial network? Not that I'm aware of. Not not that I'm aware of. So this brings us again, uh, back again to the to the questions: Why are all these beautiful molecules? Are uh, what, what are they made for? Um, I wouldn't really. I, I cannot really tell. You know, at least not in in a well founded way. Uh, what, what 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 these these better carbolines as my why are are good for for the for the mushrooms. Mm -hmm. And now for the psilocybe mushrooms, mm -hmm. what is their um, ecological relationship to plants and trees? Do are they one of these species that is symbiotic with certain plants? The, the, uh, the, these are are degraders. The, the, ah. These are are uh, degraders, which is actually the reason why it's relatively easy to you know grow them in your backyard um because the, the, their substrate is simple you need you know wood chips or or you know just dead organic matter um you know plant beds that are mulched with with uh, you know these these wood wood chips um so these these are simple degraders or they are even coprophilic which means that they grow on dung Mm. which is probably one one of the routes how they were you know distributed globally that they were introduced for example to, to the or, or some species that that were introduced um to to the new world uh simply with with cows and cattle and with with, with the dung then i see i see and um so so going back to the 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 psilocybin in the fruiting bodies of these mm -hmm. things are they unif is psilocybin uniformly distributed throughout the entire fruiting body or is it more concentrated in the cap or the stem of the fruiting body is there any localization there um well there, there are, i i know that there are investigations and it, it um it seems to be more to, to my knowledge more concentrated in the in the caps than in the stipes and the the, the spores basically are are relatively you know free and clear clear of, of, of the tryptamines um but i so, so out of our own research we haven't really made this uh, this differentiation yet so i, 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 I can't tell so so um we, we, we didn't do any 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 research to to confirm that mm -hmm. and so what are the um what are the natural types of environments that you tend to see psilocybe mushrooms? I think we, we just alluded to it a little bit. Some of them grow directly in like wood debris, and some of them mm -hmm. are coprophilic, as you said, dung-loving mushrooms. Oh, non matters, yes. And, and so what, what types of environments, like natural environments, does that mean that they're commonly found in? Oh, various various environments, uh, including, um, including basically human um basically human-made uh, environments um i mean j just walk through a through a, a, a park i mean we, we have that in, in in central europe as well in in or or in um, cemeteries um th that are um you know w w well maintained with with all the the plant beds that are that are you know well, well maintained and and and, uh, and 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 covered with with you know uh, um, wood material 
um, uh, which, which is a, a, a perfect substrate and per provides a perfect habitat for for these. For, for, for example, one of the of the potent um, species it's called psilocybin cyanescens. So cyanescens, the, the 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 one that turns blue, the one that 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 develops a blue color. That, what's the meaning of cyanescens? Mm. And and it, it grows, you know, really gregariously on on in 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 parks and and and, and artificial environments. Um, the, the other one that's um, so so I'm I'm now from from a, from a Central Europe um, European perspective. The other one is called Semalanciata, a very you know small one, tiny one, um, grows on um in on, on on higher altitudes in 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 the alps um again close to on 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 on, on meadows and 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 past and 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 basically close to 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 cow dung so this is kind of kind of the habitat but it's not not a case so so the the, the psilocybin mushrooms it is not a case that you really need to Search for in in a in a forest as, as you would do to you know to to, to pick some mushrooms some 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 bolides and chanterelles or whatever that are associated with with trees in in, in somewhere deep uh, deep down in the forest. This is not the case with psilocybin. It's more more about open habitats. I see. Or e so, even even, even uh, you know on 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 roadside. You know, yeah, on, yeah. On on, on medicine roadsides. Yeah. So the fact that they're degraders and the fact that humans human activity often Pro creates promotes, the environment yeah. you know yeah. we break up trees to make mulch and things they yeah. like those environments so is there um <clears throat> you know there's been some speculation that you know humans and mushrooms you know psilocybes may have co-evolved in this sense that you know actually humans create so many environments that are the the right environment for some of these degrad degradative mushrooms to grow that mm. through just us moving around the world and doing human stuff like making paths and gardens and stuff through the woods that we've actually facilitated their dispersal throughout the world uh, we, we we facilitated a dispersal but i, I wouldn't call it a, a, a co-evolution because i mean that the, the, the mushrooms have been around for i don't know many many more millions of years than than the, uh, we, we humans do uh, so it, it's i I, I'm, I'm, a bit, I'm a bit skeptical that, that it's really a co-evolution, but we, we basically uh, created environment that that helped them um, grow more abundantly. And, and and I mean, it brings us back to the anthropocentric perspective. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if there is a mushroom that will never get extinct, it's, it's psilocybin, right? I mean, that's <laughs> kind of a... <laughs> Yeah, and we, or we'll, same same with 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 cannabis with hemp. I mean, think think right, about right. A, a plant that 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 humans really care about and care for. Uh, then it's it's probably you know hemp. Is it um, so? When you're studying these fungi in the lab, how advanced are the genetic and molecular techniques? Like, can you make transgenic mushrooms? Mm, no. Um, it's, it's pretty. It, it has to do with with the life cycle um, of, of these mushrooms, which is a little bit complicated from a cell biology perspective. Um, so um, the answer is no, or say not not yet. I see. Um, and one of the things in, I think in, is in general, so, so mushrooms generally are are pretty um, are, are not easy to 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 manipulate genetically. There, there are some some techniques, but we've never applied them. Um, and at least not successfully uh, to the to the to, to the magic mushrooms. Mm -hmm. And how how abundant is psilocybin or, or psilocybe mushrooms in nature? Like how, how like roughly how many species of psilocybes are there? And is psilocybin produced anywhere else in nature? Is it only the psilocybe mushrooms, or does it show up anywhere else in other fungi or other plants? Um, not, not in plants. So, so it's um, so the, the number of species about psilocybin and, and other other genera. Um, very roughly, I would say two hundred species globally. Mm -hmm. Very roughly, it depends a little bit on on, on taxonomical issues because sometimes um, one one species is is you know split up in in 
five or, or many species. Sometimes they, they are then uh, consolidated again back to, to one species. So it, 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 it varies a little bit. I will say roughly 200 species. And uh, where, where else does, does it occur? Um, they definitely not in, in plants, although plants are very talented at um, and, and good at making tryptamine bioactive compounds, but not psilocybin. And there's there's some um, that there have, there have been some reports that um, psilocybin can also be made by um, say basal fungi, um, which I still need to be confirmed. I so, so 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 um, mostly basically it's, it's about these these higher um, yeah higher so most mostly found just in these psilocybe mushrooms yes yeah but there's but there's quite a few species depending on how you count mm -hmm. interesting and now what about are there any other compounds that have interesting physiological properties for humans um, that are related to psilocybin some of these other alkaloids that i know that some species produce basist and nor basist and what do we know about some of these other compounds and how common are they uh, so so uh, biosis and nor biosis and these are intermediates on the way from that that we just uh, or just talked about from from tryptophan to tryptamine to, to psilocybin so they are just intermediates and they um so they, they occur in you know variable amounts. It, it, it differs a little bit from species to species, and um, so research from from what I observe, um, research into their role, qualitative and quantitatively, um, um, has has just begun. So we don't really understand yet the, the contribution. Or at least maybe that there, there, there may be some some literature, but I'm I'm in the moment I'm not aware of of any. Um, so we we only you know slowly begin to understand uh, what role these other compounds play f for the for for the pharmacology, because because from from a from a say from a pharmaceutical perspective, uh, we we think in pure compounds in, in, in homogenous pure compounds with a reproducible, you know, ligand as so a binding molecule, a ligand receptor interaction. This is what, what we can, what we can measure and, 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 and quantitate. And I mean, that there have been reports related to, to magic mushrooms on the, the so-called entourage effect that, that other compounds may um, affect and and increase or decrease the the, the action of psilocybin. Um, there's a, this this mysterious uh, wood lover's paralysis. Mm. Um, yeah, can that, you explain? Can you explain that for people who don't know? Oh, oh, oh absolutely, sure. It's a pleasure. So um, th these are um, reports. So so wood lover's paralysis. Th these are reports. Um, more on an, on an anecdotal basis, not not really in the scientific literature, or to, to a very small degree, in the scientific literature that that um, that con that um, you know people who who consumed magic mushrooms as, as a recreational drug um, experienced um, paralysis, um, kind of numbness or really uh, they, they are were heavily impaired in their in, in, in coordination of their of their muscles and the, these are all um, uh, and, and these effects occur with those mushrooms that grow on wood this is mm. what called wood lovers paralysis with the, with the wood inhabiting mushrooms not with the ones that grow on dung like psilocybe cubensis or same alanciata later and and so th this was kind of of um, or it still is um, a kind of of a, yeah miracle. What causes these um, what, what causes these, these these paralytic effects that, that we cannot you know move over, move our, our our arms anymore or, or or feel feel numbness and so on. And because the, the effects that this these paralytic effects that last. Much longer than uh, maybe eighteen or up to twenty-four hours. Much longer 
then the, the the psychedelic effects of of psilocybin, which is maybe three or four hours and, until they they subside. And this is number one. Number two is that um, that psilocybin causes um, central effects on our central nervous system, uh, whereas the, the 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 paralytic effects are are in uh, affect our peripheral nervous system. So this is, that there must be something different going on, but we don't know why. This is a, this is a miracle. And try to you know we, so there's or has not not much been research uh, been done uh, yet. And um, but the, which kind of uh, sounds like there are other compounds at least in some species, some some particular species of mushrooms um, that are not discovered yet. I see. So there are anecdotal reports that some of these mm-hmm. wood loving psilocybes, in contrast mm-hmm. to the the coprophilic ones that grow in dung, you can get this paralysis that far outlasts the psychedelic effects mm-hmm. so there's probably some other chemistry there but but mm-hmm. we we just don't know what it is yet don't, don't know yet yeah. interesting so what other stuff do you work on in your lab it looks like you also work on things like terpenes produced um, by fungi so what are some of the other families of compounds that that your group is looking at now, the, the, the terpenes uh, are are not not a, a, a focus in my group it's it's more about um and did you are we talking about um, the, the the magic mushrooms or the other projects that are going on? And Any, yeah, anything, anything else? Okay, because I mean, we, um, the magic mushrooms are one one project, maybe the most visible one in, in my uh, in, in my research, but uh, but surely not the only one. Um, and there are others, um, for example, with um, now we move from from the magic mushrooms to to the web cap uh, web, web caps symbiotic mushrooms uh, so we, we work on on um, on other on another group of natural products uh, which are called polyketides which are distantly related to fatty acids hmm. also a very you know um, prolific group of, of, of natural products many bioactive molecules um, so th- this is an, an, another focus um how they and, and we, we recently found out that, that an undiscovered class of, of of enzymes actually make these these um, mushroom polyketides or these oligocyclic mushroom ketides so this is another focus not, not, not necessarily the, the the terpenes although i really like the terpenes and it brings us back to the to the to the, the spices and, and herbs uh, in in the beginning of, of our conversation, I really like like to you know spice up my 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 dishes with with thyme and stuff. And so the the the, the web caps this uh, one thing, and um, yeah and that and and another um, type of compounds are um, that brings us back to 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 colorful and and uh, colorful molecules. Are a group which is called um, pulvinic acids it has nothing to do with with um, with psychoactive molecules, uh, but they seem to play a role in um, in interactions between bacteria and fungi. Mm. So that they, they they impact upon biofilm formation and and stuff, and so that this is a um, so this terpenoid quinones, this pulvinic acids, this is a group of compounds that um, that I've worked with for you know many hours, which is basically the, the one that I then embarked on when I thought about a post on you know, which which program should I develop as as my my own independent program fifteen years ago, and and this is still active in my in my group. So it's basically the, the three things. It's the it's the, the magic mushrooms, it's the the, the polyketides, the mushroom polyketides, and the the the, um, the pulvinic acids, uh, which are um, very frequently found in bolides in in, in bolides mushrooms, and which are the molecules. So when when you the, 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 again, this is a, a phenomenon. Many many you know mushroom um, enthusiasts in the audience will be will be familiar with. Um, so when when you bruise a, a bolide, it will turn blue. 
mm. has nothing to do with the blueing reaction of the of the magic mushrooms it's the different chemistry and and these these provenic acids my third project is is about these these compounds i that, see that, uh, so there there are mushrooms that will bruise blue but they're not psilocybin mushrooms exactly yeah well that that brings you know to maybe a practical question um there's you know there's there's a fair number of people in the world that like to go mushroom hunting um i live in the pacific northwest i buy a lot mm -hmm. of mushrooms at the market that people go out and and they just pull right from the wild mm -hmm. and um you know this can be um if you're in the right environment potentially dangerous right because you might pick something that's toxic um, mm -hmm. if you're not a, a seasoned mushroom hunter. So mm -hmm. for a psilocybe mushroom, if someone's hunting for magic mushrooms containing psilocybin, are there what are the characteristics that they look for that would distinguish it from other things that, that might be harmful, for example? Um, well, bluing, bluing is, is one, uh, one feature, but not all of mushrooms that i mean are, are we talking about the, the edible ones or the, the the psychedelic ones uh the psychedelic ones the psych psychedelic ones um okay so so the, the, the psychedelic ones they they should bruise blue but not all mushrooms that do so are psychedelic so it's it's not uh, it's not working in that direction um so that the psilocybin mushrooms are um are well, you, you, you need to be um, an, an experienced mushroom hunter um, if you want to pick them for yeah, uh, whatever reason as, as a recreational drug. I shouldn't, you know, I, I, this is not, not something I, I, um, I, I recommend or, or endorse by, by, by no means. There's also, also legal you know, restrictions in some, some states. Um, uh, so, but just from a, from a mycological perspective, um, the, the 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 psilocybin mushrooms are quite uh, quite uh, variable in 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 in, in the, the way in, in their appearance, you know, in, in their in their morphology. From from um, cubensis, I mean, which are not very likely to find in the Pacific Northwest, which are you know really you know tall tall mushrooms, um, down down to to tiny. Um, yeah, a tiny species. Um, so there, there's no real, you know, one feature fits all um, trait that, that that would help you identify. I mean, on, on with, with the naked eye. I mean that there are, there are microscopic um, features that that then help you identify as a certain species. Um, but for I mean for 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 the cyanescence, which is basically one of the of the the widely distributed mushroom wood loving mushroom, um, it has a what, what's characteristic is that it grows in uh, gregariously in 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 in, in clusters in, in 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 basically in troops, and um, and has, and the the here the the the, the, the margin here. Um, turns turns a little bit bluish um, as they as the, the, the fruiting bodies age, and they are kind kind of wavy a, a wavy shape. Mm -hmm. here. It's not 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 as as, as straight as here. Yeah. But it's kind, kind of so so basically, it sounds like you're saying that all psilocybin containing mushrooms should bruise blue, but just because something bruises blue doesn't mm -hmm. mean it's a psilocybin mm -hmm. mushroom. It's a, it's a psilocybin mushroom. Yeah. So it needs to bruise blue, and you also need to probably have good familiarity with the specific morphology of the species that is likely to grow in your area. Yes. Yes. And plus to make it more complicated, uh, th there's a lot of psilocybin related mushrooms um, that do not make psilocybin. Um, so they morphologically have, look similar, but they don't look, look similar, but 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 do, do not make psilocybin. They have I mean, from from a from a taxonomical perspective, they have been, you know, separated in, in or, or grouped into a different genus. Now, um, so psilocybe mushrooms are now, you know, from a taxonomic perspective, now um, are requ required basically to make psilocybin to to really belong to that particular genus. Uh, but there are many, many out there, and that, that this is this is uh, also the reason why why uh, say you have really um, uh, don't 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 take any chances uh, because similar looking mushrooms 
uh, can be very, very toxic mm. and make um, so I'm, I'm not familiar or not, not familiar enough with, with, the, with the microflora in, 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 say, in North America or the Pacific Northwest, but at least from, from the European one. I can say that, that similar looking mushrooms make, make, the, um, make the toxin that also makes the death cap toxic and, 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 and fatal, basically. Um, what, is, what is that molecule? Uh, Ammonidin. Um, mm. um, which basically um, attacks your your liver tissue and 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 blocks processes in your in your liver, in, inhibits your liver, um, and w- which eventually may cause death. And what 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 most people don't know is that that not not, not just the death caps make make ammonitin or ammonitins. It's again it's a family of compounds, but also other ones and and among them. You know, a little brown capped um, mushrooms that may, at least at first glance, uh, look similar to to um, to psilocybin, for example, cyanessence. I see. And an, an unexperienced, you know, um, unexperienced people may may really um, confuse them. Yeah. So I guess to kind of re- recap what you've told us about psilocybin, there's really this one genus of mushrooms with maybe some minor exceptions, but it's, it's the psilocybes that produce psilocybin. Mm -hmm. It's produced in the fruiting body in the reproductive Mm -hmm. organ of the plant. Mm -hmm. It's got this interesting biochemistry where the, the fungi are eating uh, tryptophan in their diet. They're turning tryptophan Mm -hmm. into tryptamine, tryptamine into psilocybin. Mm -hmm. And you told us about this interesting chemistry where the molecule is stabilized and protected in certain ways. But mm-hmm. it's done in this reversible manner, so it can very mm-hmm. quickly uh, make the psilocin bluing reaction happen mm-hmm. plausibly as a way to protect itself from things that want to eat the fruiting body. And it evolved that biochemistry for its own reasons, and it just happens to be psychoactive when an animal eats it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a very, very interesting, uh, very interesting organism. Um, what do we know about um, like the genetics underlying this? Are there um, particular genes that evolved in this lineage of psilocybes to allow it to have that biochemistry? Mm-hmm. So, um, so basically, uh, this uh, we, we need four enzymes to convert um, tryptophan into tryptamine, into norbiosystem, biosystem, psilocybin. And, and these four enzymes uh, correspond to four genes, uh, which are present in pr- more or less the same arrangement. Maybe sometimes some, some duplication happen um, in, in the psilocybin mushrooms, uh, psilocybin and also in some, some other um, genera. So it's not, not, not just psilocybin. I mean, they're all, although they are most, most you know, f- familiar and well-known, but there are also some, some other um, genera and that, that do contain a kind of a, a, a genetic locus of a, a portion of, of their, of their genome, um, 25, 000, roughly 25,000 bases are necessary uh, that, that, you know, contains these four or sometimes duplicated five or six uh, genes to make psilocybin happen. And there, there's, um, there's one, one study that came out well, almost five years ago, N- not out of my lab, um, uh, an, uh, a colleague of mine, Jason Slot in, 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 in uh, Ohio, um, who basically, um, basically elucidated how, how these, how these genes found each other hmm. um, and out, outside the genus and then the, um, the psilocybin and then how, how the how the you know the, the entire cluster of genes um, you know got transferred and then radiated out beautiful work interesting um what what kinds of uh you know for the psilocybin group in your lab what are some of the questions that you're working on today what's what's on the cutting edge that um that's top of mind for your group right now mm-hmm. um it, it's the blooming reaction still um which um which is yeah kind kind of one 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 focus um it's also about the enzymes uh, to to characterize the enzymes um you know in in greater you know greater detail for example this this um this this uh, 
um, protection mechanism to bring psilocin back to psilocybin. This is something we we still focus on, and um, yeah, so it's it's still still active active project. Well, you've you've shared a lot of interesting stuff with us, Doctor Hoffmeister. Are there any final thoughts you want to leave people with about you know the biochemistry of psilocybin mushrooms or mycology generally? Um. Some some final thoughts. It's it's maybe on a, on a, on a more general thing that, that I've. Um, I mean, we, we talked a lot about science and and discoveries and 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 theories, hypotheses, uh, which not, would not have been possible to discover with without um, very very dedicated co-workers um, and 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 group members here. So I, I would like to to. Um, to mention um, um, Alex Sherwood of the Yosemite Institute of Madison, Wisconsin, um, who is a fun guy and so so you know so such a pleasure to work with. It's with uh, Andrew Shadine of um, of Chemtech, who actually appeared on your um, in, in in I think it was episode number seventy one, who is also um, uh, it, it's so inspiring to 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 share thoughts with him and, and cooperate with him. Uh, with um, Bernhard Rupp, um, he's an American Austrian uh, protein chemist, also fun guy, and and so they they, they are. Um, it's it, I'm, I'm really privileged to 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 cooperate with all of them, and um, and develop hy- hypotheses and, and and share thoughts and get input and provide them with input, and also with with a, a very enthusiastic um, group here and very dedicated group here behind behind this wall. Um, who, who actually do the do the the, the, the creative work and the, and the, the lab work um, and really come up with with new knowledge and so th- this is this is really a, a privilege I think uh, w- and w- which I would like to, to emphasize that it's not just one person um, um, who, who is standing in in, in in the front but it's 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 about the, the cooperators and the and the co-workers that that do all the work and and yeah. Um, yeah. So just like the mushrooms, it's a, a lot of symbiosis. It's, it's symbi- exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Professor and, and, Dirk- and, and, and one that that's very, very well working yeah. in, in, in well, my Prof- case, fortunately. Professor Dirk Hoffmeister, thank you for your time. And I look forward to talking to you again at some point. It was a pleasure. Thank you for having me.